Hi guys, my name is Dr. Pallak Patel and I'm with Bluefish Pediatrics. Today I'm going to talk to you about nosebleeds, also known as epistaxis. Now when a nosebleed happens to your child at home, it can be quite scary, but luckily it's rarely a cause of anything serious. Now what are the different causes of nosebleeds? Well, children have a pretty vast vascular supply in their nose, so they tend to bleed more frequently. But other causes can be spontaneous rubbing or picking of their nose, which we know children do quite often, blowing too hard or suctioning that causes any kind of trauma in the nose. Also, viral infections and allergies that irritate the nasal mucosa or the lining inside the nose can also lead to the nosebleeds. Allergy medication as well as dry air and low humidity are other causes of this. Now the two listed here at the bottom, bleeding disorders and anatomic abnormalities, they tend to be more rare. However, when they do occur, it tends to lead to a lot of bleeding and more frequently. We'll touch base on those in a second. Now, what do you do when your child does have a nosebleed at home? The good thing is most of them, they can be cared for at home. And it's similar to if you got a cut on your arm, you wanna hold pressure there. So first things first, take a deep breath, stay calm. If you're freaking out, your child might pick up on that and get more scared too. So take a deep breath, and what you wanna do is hold pressure. The easiest way to do it is by squeezing the soft lower part of your nose in towards that middle septum. And you wanna use your thumb and your index finger and just squeeze. Positioning your child, um, the best way to do it is have them sitting up, leaning forward, and breathing through their mouth. You wanna avoid having them lie down because it can cause them to swallow the blood and then subsequently vomit. So hold pressure for 10 minutes. Afterwards, if you notice that the bleeding has subsided a little but is still trickling, go ahead and keep holding pressure for another 10 minutes. But if you notice that the bleeding is still pretty profuse or if your child is starting to have uh, some dizziness, being pale or faint from the large amount of blood that they've lost, it'd be a good idea to seek medical care at that time. Another cause of seeking medical care sooner rather than later is if they're having a lot of bruising that's new or bleeding that's new, such as when they're brushing their teeth. Now we mentioned the two causes here that are more rare, the bleeding disorders and the anatomic abnormalities. What are signs of those? Well, if your child is less than one, if their nosebleeds are becoming more frequent or they're getting harder and harder to stop, then it's a good idea to contact your pediatrician. Another reason is if you find out there's a family history of bleeding, then your pediatrician can help see if your child has that as well. Now, what can we do to prevent these nosebleeds since they are pretty common? The first things first is try to keep your child from picking their nose as much as possible. Also, trimming their nails can help prevent any kind of micro trauma when they do. Using a humidifier and being gentle with blowing and suctioning can also help decrease your frequency of nosebleeds. Vaseline can be helpful if you had a recent nosebleed or if your nasal mucosa is on the drier side. You can put Vaseline in there twice a day for about a week and see if that helps with the nosebleeds. So to summarize, nosebleeds are pretty common in children and have a variety of different causes. You can care for them at home by staying calm, holding pressure for 10 minutes while your child is sitting up and leaning forward. Go ahead and seek medical care though if the bleeding is continuing or if your child has other symptoms of bleeding. You can try to prevent them at home by being gentle and preventing any kind of microtrauma. Hopefully next time if your child does have a nosebleed, this video kind of helps calm you and take care of it at home. But if you have any questions, please reach out to your pediatrician. We're here to help.